preparing claim is a claim by the state of New Jersey. And you have to be aware of this when you buy or sell property because uh, if the state of New Jersey has a claim, it affects title to your property. So thank you very much for tuning in today for our Ask the Expert series. And today we are very fortunate and feel very proud to have one of the leading attorneys uh, in the state of New Jersey uh, who is an expert on riparian and CAFRA approvals. So today uh, we'd like to welcome the attorney, John Scott Abbott. Um, Scott is a native of the islands as I am and we're all very familiar with um, some of the uh, challenges and opportunities we have um, living close to the water. So Scott, we're thrilled to have you here today and if you'd like to go ahead and speak to us about you know living on a barrier island and uh, moving forward to build some beachfronts and bayfronts and those streams that go through some properties. Um, we're here to uh, learn from you. Well, thank you, Mary Lou. I'm John Scott Abbott. Uh, I go by Scott, that's what everybody calls me. I've been a lawyer for over 40 years and I've had the good fortune to grow up in the Ventnor Margate area. Went to Atlantic High, was Atlantic City Lifeguard and then for a couple of years of Ventnor Lifeguard. And uh, I started practicing law right when casino gambling hit Atlantic City. And I've been very fortunate. I got involved with repairing claims, which is our topic today. Repairing claim is a claim by the state of New Jersey. And you have to be aware of this when you buy or sell property because uh, if the state of New Jersey has a claim, it affects title to your property. Now, so for instance, if you were to buy a home, you would have a title insurance company run your title and you want to see if there's what we call a repairing claim. Again, that's state of New Jersey claims ownership to some or in some instances, all of your property. Now to understand how to deal with this, you have to have uh, a little bit of background as to what is a repairing claim. So I'm going to give you a little history lesson. It goes back to colonial times when the state of New Jersey broke away from the King of England. So if any of you have ever watched any of those movies where the English King is he's in charge of the land and he owns everything that is title flows comes over from England. The King of England owned everything if it was tight tidal flowed, salt water, high tide, low tide. So the King of England owned everything. When New Jersey finally became independent, the state of New Jersey took over for the King of England and claimed ownership to all tidal flow areas. So that area between high tide and low tide. This was to have profound impact on us here in the 20 and 21st century. So that uh, by the time casino gambling had come, there was a caseload uh, decisional law where the state had confirmed its ownership and people would have to go get what's called a repairing grant. That's what I specialize in, getting a repairing grant. That's a deed from the state of New Jersey. It all kind of began in Atlantic City. Back in the early 1890s, 1900s, Atlantic City was one of the most valuable real estate areas in the country, the entire United States. And so if they, big hotels, if they wanted to own the beach, or they wanted to build a pier, they would go to the state and get a D, which was a repairing claim. That moved forward. There were disputes with the state as, as to ownership to air, various areas primarily Atlantic City, but also some of other areas. The trains, train companies, uh, railroads, they would have to get a grant, for instance, if they wanted to have a, uh, a bridge over tidal flowed water and they would get title so they could build their bridge. Now in the uh, mid seventies, this is when it really hit the fan. The casino developers came in, Atlantic City was a little backwater resort. That now all of a sudden had casino gambling, land values skyrocketed. 20, maybe 10, $20 a square foot to three, four, five hundred dollars a square foot. And at that time, I was there as a clerk in my uncle's office, we were in a guaranteed trust building. The uh, city of Atlantic City, they, the state of New Jersey said, oh, by the way, we own title to many of these areas where you want to develop your casinos, put in millions of dollars and create thousands of jobs. 
you have to buy the state's interest. And the developers and the realtors and the lawyers say, what are you talking about? Oh, there used to be a creek there 100 years ago, Saltwater Creek, that uh, got filled in, has been used for 100 years. People pay real estate taxes, build homes, build buildings. But now the state of New Jersey came out and claimed ownership. That happened all over the place. Now, South Harris is. Uh, the state of New Jersey actually tried to claim ownership of the entire South Inlet, to the base of the lighthouse, which is at Rhode Island Pacific Avenue. They claimed those two blocks, between the Rhode Island Avenue lighthouse out to the ocean. They lost that case, fortunately. We had a great judge, Gibson, ruled against them. The appellate court upheld that decision. That attempted land grab failed, but they succeeded in other areas. Because when the casinos wanted to develop, they wanted to open up quickly. They're making millions of dollars in short amounts of time, so they would pay the state. It's all relevant to the homeowner today, and I'll, I'll get to it. The background, I think, is fascinating. I hope you find it interesting. Super interesting. So the the casinos would have to deal with the NJDEP. DEP would say, before we give you your permit to build your casino, by the way, you have to buy this area that was flowed by tidal water, or there was a creek there 100 years ago, or the ocean was up that high. And what the state actually did, and I saw it with my own eyes, they would get these large checks for many thousands of dollars, and they would take pictures, and some of these guys in the Attorney General's office would frame these pictures, kind of like a trophy, have like a lion's head. Oh, we got this casino to pay this many hundreds of thousands of dollars, that casino to pay tens of thousands of dollars before we give them their permit. Well, there was lots of litigation, a lot of litigation. And the reason I am now in my upper 60s, I got involved was my uncle was involved with land and something called Higby's Creek, which is where the new convention hall is partially sighted, became a very heavily litigated claim and I did all the discovery with the uh, title insurance company lawyers, even to the point of going through a trial for a week and a half in Atlantic City. At some point, the judge said, look, it's not looking good for you guys. So that title insurance company, who's Commonwealth, paid the state $800,000, roughly 1980, to clear up this repairing claim. And it was a claim for a creek that hadn't been there for 100 years, but they said they owned title. Okay. So, during this time frame, the, the title company said, look, we don't know how to insure title. If we don't know where these claims are. And then there was the litigation. Senator Gormley at that time was involved. He actually sued the state. So eventually what happened, they mandated that riparian claims maps must be published so that the public would know where these riparian claims are. Very fascinating story. Now, here I am, a young lawyer. I was friendly at that time with Art Ponzio Sr. who was a surveyor, and we anxiously awaited to see what these maps looked like. And Art Sr. and I, the day they came out, drove out to the county clerk in Mays Landing. Landing this is Landing County. And here were these maps. I brought one. I don't know if you can see this. These maps established where the state said there were claims, and they claimed ownership to thousands of properties. Here, again, I guess be careful what you wish for. The title come down, if you can see that very clearly or not. This is a claims map. These are of record with the county. And all of these counties, these little boxes you see, have a claims map. That claims map I'm showing you shows you basically have Seacon Island. And they came from many sources that the state put together to establish claims of ownership to people's homes. You can imagine, I remember this very well, people would pack public meetings, auditoriums, Vendor Avenue School. Mary Lou, I don't know if you went to Vendor Avenue School. I did. I grew up in Vendor. No, no. Packed but... to the rafters, people screaming, fighting. Oh, how can the state claim my home? Because it wasn't just Atlantic City. Now they claim Vendors, Margate, Avalon, Cape May Point, Monmouth County, Brigantine thousands of thousands of properties where the state wanted money to clear title to people's homes and many times the family had owned it for 50 years and paid real estate taxes people even to this day are dumbfounded 
that the state of New Jersey, which is unique, I don't think any other state does this, claims ownership and makes you pay money to clear title to your property. It's so, so incredible that that all started in Atlantic in Atsikan Island. Well, and repairing claims were everywhere, but they were generally not something where the state would say, oh, by the way, a hundred years ago, the area was filled in and you now have to pay us. In the years, and I love history, I've researched, got old photographs, pictures. So it turns out all these barrier islands had massive amounts of dredging. And when I say massive, I'm telling you more than 50%. So for instance, picture Venner Heights, picture lower end of Margate, uh, Amherst Avenue, that was all water. Chelsea Heights, it was all salt marsh. Vast areas of Ocean City were salt marsh. And they moved hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of dredge material. And they filled these lands up and they filled in these creeks. I have 1920. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, we can see. Wow. Okay, so all of this is the Ocean City area where the lagoons and the bayfront homes are. Mm -hmm. In 1920, it was wetlands with these tidal creeks flowing through. I had a case where the, my guy had a house that turned out to be right in the center of that creek. Big claim, hundreds of thousands of people. But, so everywhere you look, it's been filled, so the sand has been leveled and pushed out. I say more than 50% of these islands, that, that's how they were created. But when they filled in these creeks, the state still retained ownership. That's what the courts have ruled. So that's where I come in and I make these applications to the state and I fight with the state often. And many times I can come up with source maps or other evidence that shows that the claim is wrong or there should be a discount. And most times we end up getting a 75% discount, which is the maximum discount. The process is you make an application and you go in front of a what's called the Tidelands Resource Council eventually after you get through the um, level of the bureaucracy when they they channel it and they look for compliance they'll deal with issues like bulkhead location docks and then eventually there's an issue setting the price and the homeowner the title insurance company whoever pays the state to get a repairing grant it's a fancy word for a deed and that deed clears title to your property covering a lot of ground here i i, I hope everybody can follow this absolutely but for instance so if you have a home let's say you have a repairing claim let me give you a, here i'll use this fellow survey for an example so you get a repairing survey here's one down in stone harbor on the bay you can see that the little blue area is clean we had to buy that and we were able to get a 75 percent discount because the source of the maps was weak Sometimes it's very strong. So when these maps came out in 1981, 1982, they were filed with each county clerk in the state. And a lot of people uh, ignored it. So even to, to this day, there's hundreds and hundreds of claims still out. So, and I'm processing them literally every week. So for example, Scott, if you have a claim, you find a claim against the property, there must be some type of uh, uh, schedule of calculations, how there you is. figure out what you owe to the state. And it, it's just so incredible that, you know, we close transactions and we have clients come from other areas and they're getting ready to close. And a lot of times they'll find like a riparian, a small stream running under the house. And we're like, uh -oh, hold back, you know, we need to get this claim resolved and uh, the closing is delayed and then you know we don't always know the turnaround time to resolve the matter so it's uh, you know after all these years um, they still continue to come up and uh, you know cause holdups now and then until uh, you know they sure do cause hold up <laughs> I'll give you an example so people the other day with property in Margate not on the bay off the bay by the way they don't have to be on the waterfront it can be three blocks from the ocean or bay, and there's a repairing claim affecting them. So these people had settlement schedule. 
title company comes up and says, hey, we find that there's a claim here. And in that instance, the people backed out. The buyer said, we don't want anything. But they could, in many instances, they call me in to have the settlement occur. And so what you do is just like you say, you can value that square footage. Every place is different. Ventnor Heights is different from Avalon. Bayfront Margate's different from Golf Course Brigantine. But you can come up with a pretty good estimate, usually based on tax assessments, as to what that claim amounts to dollars. And the title insurance companies, this developed in the 80s, the only way to make transactions go forward, they'll take a portion of the settlement proceeds, seller's money, they'll put it in escrow. And then somebody like me, and they, I deal with all the title companies, they like the old me because I do this is almost, not all of my practice, but pretty much all. I do the application and go and get the grant. And it takes time. It takes about a year. Now the ones that are not on the waterfront take less than a year. Uh, so say, say it's a half a million dollar transaction and there's a 10% claim. Give me an example. So say, say they say that they're, and usually they're going to tear the house down and build a new house. Land value, half a million, let's say 10% claim, that's 50000 Title company is going to want to hold seventy five dollars to $100,000 in escrow. I process the application. I don't like a zoning board application. It's an application in the state of New Jersey, Bureau of Tithe Limits. We apply for a grant. Again, that's a D. Um, and it goes through a step of process. First, you have to confirm and accept the survey. Then they'll come up and they'll look at their sources and they'll establish valuation. Sometimes we get an appraiser involved. If it's under 10%, many times we'll just go with the city tax assessment. Can't always use the city tax assessment because a lot of times they're they're too far off. They can be too low. They can be too high. Then eventually, once the staff has agreed to the dollar amount and percentage of claim of the property, he will go in front of what's called the Tidelands Resource Council. It is a body that's appointed by the governor up in Trenton. We have the meetings once a month, except January. I'm usually there every month, and they vote on whether to give you a discount, as I say, 75% discount, or no discount. And then you have a right, you can appeal that. You can always file a quiet title action against the state, and many have. Normally, the courts will uphold the state's position. They have generally upheld many of the repairing claims. And, um, you know, through the years, some of the politicians have tried to uh, stop these repairing claims. They propose legislation. Usually, title insurance companies are behind it, pushing it. Um, but they've never been able to knock it out. And the reason is because there's money going into the state. This money, uh, at least on the surface, looks like it goes into an education fund. That's what it's supposed to do. But it also pays for upkeep of the DEP bureaucracy and people who work there. And, whatnot. and so, it's money gone to the state of New Jersey, and right now, with this pandemic, there's no chance that they're going to stop asserting repairing claims. So people have to de either deal with it, or you're not going to have a good title to your property if you're affected by it. Wow, our area is so rich in um, history, but I think what's so important is with an attorney, uh, with your knowledge, if a repairing claim does arise or if you want to develop a property you can work through it and um, work with the very state tough and obtain, uh, obtain the deed I uh, hear something interesting that maybe for most people uh, wouldn't affect them but like waterfront property because of technology and computers the state in recent years I'd say within the last seven years they now use computer technology and they look to see is your bulkhead where it should be is your dock where it should be and i literally have the state coming back saying to me you will not process the repairing grant until your client gets straight with dep land use and either legalizes the dock or stasis moves a bulkhead or puts the bulkhead where it belongs and it's really uh, become very tricky when you're dealing with waterfront property. And what happens now, some of these properties are so valuable that the 
that the usually the buyers will get an analysis done. What title problems do we have? And so you'll get a report sometimes that'll say, you know, your permit that was issued in 1992 allowed your bulkhead to be 152 feet from your front property line, but we find it to be 154 feet. And the state will make you either move the bulkhead or get a permit for the bulkhead. And that's an expensive process, two, three thousand dollars just the application. Plus you have to engineer, you have to have so survey, go through the process. And the state's very tough on docks uh, for reasons that I don't fully understand. I've argued many times against it. I think they're too tough. Like, for instance, they don't like jet ski floating docks. You know how a normal, many payfront homes will have two or three jet ski docks? That's not permitted under regulations. If you show that or they see that in aerial photography, they will tell you you have to remove it, get a permit. We also get in the aspect of leasing water float areas instead of buying it. So like for instance in Ventnor, which is famous for their homes on piling over water, some of those homeowners have to pay a lease every year to the state. And they're expensive. Usually I think it's six, seven percent of the square foot land value. I've seen some leases five thousand a year, eight thousand a year, plus real estate taxes. And I've been very successful at least in Ventnor because I have a collection of old surveys and maps that show that that waterway that goes under the Dorset Avenue Bridge, which is where I grew up on, um, at one time was a very narrow stream. And I have shown and proved to the state that many of those areas of their homes over water was dredged out. Those areas on piling actually were upland. And I've been successful in being able to get repairing grants, which is a deed, which increases the value of that property tremendously versus paying an annual lease fee to the state. Uh, which if you can avoid that, you don't want to pay at least to the state because now it's a double hit. Lease to the state of New Jersey plus your real estate taxes. You still have to pay the real estate tax. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty It's pretty crazy. Um, but it's very interesting. And it's, a, you know, for one, I'm a history guy. I love the history. Uh, you know, we've had the dune projects. We've had the issue of boardwalks. Who owns the beach? Here on Absecon Island, most of the beaches are at one time were privately owned and i've researched all the title for much of atlantic city all vendors all margates long ports and there were times when the developers would get a grant that would go 1500 feet out they'd build jetties and they'd build up the sand they'd build up the sand three or four hundred feet i know this happened in atlantic city ocean city as well where they actually moved their boardwalk ocean bridge so at one time, the Atlantic City Boardwalk was about a block inland from where it is now. But over time, that beach built up, and so they moved the boardwalk closer to the ocean. Yeah, that, very, very interesting. Yeah, that definitely comes up in some of those AC beachfront projects that I've worked on. You know, over sure, the- I know you're familiar. Yeah. So then the state, as I say, the state tried to claim all those things. Uh, they were built up by artificial means. It's only if it's, it builds up naturally by what they call accretion. And they lost that case. I'm glad they did because they were trying to claim from Virginia Avenue, which is where Steel Pier was, all the way up to New Hampshire Avenue, back two blocks. Imagine. But state won. I had a case with the state two years ago, when Jimmy Whalen was mayor, where they had a, a big repairing claim at Gardner's Basin. But I'm see. I collect old maps and surveys. My wife thinks I'm crazy. I sat for about eight hours at an auction for an estate one time, trying to get a hold of an old survey of the northeast corner of Atlantic City, and I got it. And she wanted she come on, let's go home. What are you doing? I, no, no, it's it's ten more away. I'm I gotta have this survey, and it's on linen. They're beautiful, and they were very accurate. And I bought this survey. So one day I'm. Many years ago, Jimmy Whalen calls me in the office. He goes, you you know how to deal with the state. Do you think you can do something about this big repairing claim? They want $100,000 from the city. And I said, Jimmy, I have a survey that shows where the creek was. And it's not where the state says it was. It was two blocks over. So I take the survey up to Trenton, all around there, a bunch of attorney generals, staff, engineers. And they're looking and saying, where the hell did you, where'd you get this? 
it had been a survey by the Camden Atlantic Railroad on linen. It's big. It's it's gorgeous, and it's very accurate. It got latitude, longitude, very precise. And I said to the state, look, this is an ancient document. I'm going to go in front of a judge. The judge is going to rule I'm right. What it did is it showed Landing Creek and how I did some research on it. Landing Creek was the creek that the ships bringing in the block were for the lighthouse. I'm seeking the lighthouse until the 1850s. As you probably know, there's a lighthouse up there right. by George Meade. He yeah. was the general that ultimately wins the Battle of Gettysburg for the Union, yeah. saves the Union. It's he built the lighthouse in Atlantic City. <laughs> so this landing creek was because they landed supplies and they built the lighthouse. And I should the state said, okay, we know you can beat this. So a confirmatory grant for a thousand bucks covered the whole area. And uh, that was one of my prouder accomplishments. It really helped the development move forward from the Gardner's Basin area. All because I sat in a, an auction place for almost eight hours waiting for this this damn survey to get a survey. But it was yeah. well worth the wait. Years later, I used it to good use. Uh, I've, as I say, I enjoy doing this. Sometimes these are heartbreaking situations. The state claims ownership to somebody's home. Sometimes it's as high as 100%. I've had elderly people come in. Maybe they're living on Social Security. They live in a row house, and there he got a 100% repairing claim. Kids are trying to sell it so they can move them maybe into assisted living. And now they can't do it because there's a bad claim. And sometimes we can process those pretty quick. There's, the staff's pretty good up at Tidehands. And I think they try to work with you. They have a job to do, too. I mean, people get mad at them. That, you know, it's, uh, but they work for the state. The state's taking a position that it owns these areas. And so you deal with the Thailand's people, and I have pretty good with them. And usually they try to be fair. It's a difficult situation. A lot of people are very upset they have to pay anything. I understand. Money is money. But uh, as I say, I've probably done, probably have done over the years a thousand. Wow. And I keep all my files. <laughs> I, it's very significant and important that you love the history of the area. And oh, yeah. you're really the defender for, you know, the people that want to live here and have all these, you know, luxurious homes and, you know, have the home ownership that you're able to, you know, clear the title and, um, you know, make the transactions move forward. And I know what you mean about, you know, collecting the older maps because my dad is a huge fan of history. Of course, dad's a, I have read his books. Yes, I think we just got to finish the Senator Farley book, but in our basement we have these maps that a um, appraiser, his name is Walter Myers, and he was, uh, I think like when I was in my 20s, he came and worked with us, and he had these huge books with all the tax maps, and we would use them all the time because, you know, we could look back or we would share them, somebody would say, do you have those books from um, Mr. Myers? So I think they're still in the basement. I'll have to see what's down there. You never know. I love to see them sometime. Yeah. I mean, they, we had, they were so fragile. You have to move the pages one at a time. They were like crazy old, but. Um, yeah, for, for Atlantic City, and they did these things called Mueller Atlases, Sandberg. There was about four or five of them. And they're great big leather books. I have a bunch of them. Huh. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I see some people take them and they cut pages out and they frame them. I, I think that's like sacrilege. You should, you should preserve those documents. And I told my wife when, they, when I ever go, um, those books should be given to historic societies. I know I was very instrumental in Ventnor and Wargate's historic society. I want to share them with Alec. Yeah. Um, because they're invaluable history. I mean, I have one that's from 1904. It's gigantic with pictures of just about every hotel in Atlantic City in its A day of 1980. I prize that one a lot. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. And they do help me some. These maps help me argue against the state that their plotting of a riparian creek or a high water line is wrong. Here's why it's wrong. There's a map attached here. Some of them I have found uh, in microfilm. A lot of them I found in Atlantic County. And uh, you can go and prove the state's positions not that strong, maybe you just get a discount. That's that's important too. So, again, when people buy homes, you're going to get a title insurance policy. 
And that's this is one of the reasons you get title insurance. You have somebody search a title to say, do you have a riparian claim? Now, in other parts of the country, they have things like, uh, does an Indian tribe own your land? Or so, does somebody have mineral rights to you? Don't really have that problem here in South Jersey. Do have the riparian problem? Riparian. The state of New Jersey might own. It. And uh, we really appreciate all your energy and expertise. And uh, you definitely are the go-to uh, riparian attorney in our area. And uh, we very much appreciate your time and your energy today. And I'm going to go in the basement next time I can back get back on the island and. Uh, see what uh, historic uh, maps. And like to see what you have. I'll be happy to share with you. And uh, again, thank you so much uh, for your time today. We really appreciate it. Okay, thank you.